Today we will be demonstrating how the relationship of a permanent magnet rotor and a servo motor stator, which is the wound electromagnetic portion of the motor, affect the commutator of the motor and how we determine the number of poles a servo motor has when determining the electrical and mechanical angles when aligning an encoder. Most servo motors have what is called a permanent magnet rotor, as you can see here. When the windings are excitated, there is a relationship between the magnetic fields of the stator and this permanent magnet. The drive uses this in order to achieve commutation, which is the rotation of the motor. Here we will demonstrate determining the amount of poles in a motor, which will allow us to correctly align the feedback after the motor is serviced. And now we will start with the steps. We have the Mitchell Electronics model TI5260 lockup box, which will send DC voltage into the windings on certain phases. First, we will lock up U and V. Now we will mark a home position. Next, we will start by turning the rotor another few degrees and mark the locations that are giving us resistance. So, as you can see, we have determined that this is a 10-pole motor because we have five angles of resistance in equal distance as we measure the motor. Now we will go to our Siemens motor. We will repeat the same process. We will set a home position and we will lock up the electrical angle. We have our home position. We felt resistance there. And we turn the motor again and again. So now we have four equidistant marks and that would be an eight pole motor. So these magnetic poles are used to determine the electrical angle needed when aligning the motor feedback, which is located here. And that will give you your home position for starting your alignment. Thank you for watching. For more videos, subscribe to our channel.